Let's read some Glitch in the Matrix stories, part 131. This story takes place in the early 2010s. I was hanging out with my then boyfriend Trevor, his best friend James, his girlfriend Natalie, and another friend Derek. After playing video games at James's place for a while, we decided to stretch our legs and go for a walk as it was a beautiful summer day. There was this newly built transit station at the edge of a business park near where James lived, and we decided that that's where we would go explore on our walk. We passed some older businesses that had been there for years, one James even mentioned his dad used to work at, and came across another building that looked abandoned but none of us had ever seen before it was at least five stories tall looked brand new with what looked like a large greenhouse that was covered internally from top to bottom with sheets of blue printer paper taped together to block out any view of the inside that's creep city that's like i feel like that's like where murders happen and bad shit goes down in a place like that just run just run you leave immediately there was a small rip in some papers and when we tried to look inside all we could see was pitch black abyss Derek decided he wanted to keep looking and guided us around the structure to see if we could find out the name of the building. That's when I started to get a bad feeling. I already have a bad feeling and I'm just reading this story. We continued to walk until we reached the front of the building. The entry was primarily made of large windows and went inward into the building that connected to two large glass doors. The walls of this entryway were all glass as well and we could finally see inside the building. Aside from the looming darkness, we could only see cubicles, at least two cubicles alongside each window, making it four cubicles per side of the entryway. The boys started to walk into the entryway and towards the doors to try to open them. Natalie and I also started to walk towards the entrance, but once I stepped closer, I started to feel sick. Derek began to make fun of me, saying that it was all an act as I was just too scared to try to enter the building. Um, even if you were scared, who the fuck cares? That's a scary goddamn building. I wouldn't enter that goddamn building. No, thank you. He then put his hands on the doors and pulled, but they were obviously locked. He shook the doors vigorously and yelled, trying to be funny. This guy sounds like a dick. But then something caught my attention in one of the windows to the right of the doors. Nothing was there, but I could feel us being watched. Everyone else started to walk towards the windows to peek inside as I watched, still feeling sick and uneasy. I kept making quick glances to that specific window where I could still feel us being watched. Derek started making fun of me again, so I told him to shove off and I began to walk towards the entryway. Why'd you do that? Just, who cares? Who cares if Derek made fun of you? Turn around. <gasps> Turn around. That's when my sickness got worse and I could feel whatever was watching us become more intense. At this point, I could pinpoint it standing there in the back window between the two cubicles and I could feel how badly it wanted us. Mm, I don't like that sentence. The more I felt its malevolent desire for us, the sicker I felt, and that's when I haunched over, dry heaving, ready to puke. James rushed up to me and asked me if I was okay and tried to help me stand up straight. That's when he whispered to me, you feel it too? Oh my God, oh my God. I looked up at him shocked and he had a worried look on his face. I nodded and I pointed to where I could feel whatever it was watching us, but refused to look as I was convinced that if I did, I would see it and I did not want to see it. I could feel it pull all its focus on me after I pointed where I sensed it. James finally spoke up and told the rest of our group how he felt something nefarious inside and that we needed to leave. Derek laughed, but James shot him a dirty look. I do not like Derek. I hope we are not friends with Derek anymore. My boyfriend Trevor finally came up to me and helped me walk away from the building towards grassy fields that ended at the edge of a main road and everyone else followed. As we continued to walk away from the building, my sickness diminished along with the eyes I felt burning through me. We walked through the field, down the road, and made it back to James's house, and at this point, I felt completely fine but freaked out. We talked about it and the guys joked about going back at night but never followed through. Thank God. Boys are so dumb. About two weeks later, Trevor, James, Natalie, and I were driving and found ourselves exiting the carpool lane, which just so happens to enter into that new transit station. Of course, the conversation about the building came up, and Trevor, who was driving, decided he wanted to drive past the building just to see if there was a name or address that we could look up to find its history. After reluctantly agreeing, we drove back to the building and parked at the company James had previously mentioned his dad used to work at. We tried to make jokes as we nervously walked in the direction towards the creepy building. But there was no building. Nothing but a grassy hill alongside the grassy field that ended at the edge of the main road. 
all of us were confused. We walked back to the car and argued if we went the right way. We walked around the business park for at least two hours before we decided just to give up with no creepy building in sight. I have had many experiences with spirits and ghosts throughout my life and I am convinced whatever it was in there was a demon. I will admit a few years back, I tried looking for it again. I even searched on Google and Apple Maps, but no luck as there was no trace of a building ever being there. Now I don't ever go into that business park when I go to visit my family back home. Even when Pokemon Go came out and I take my little brother Pokemon hunting, I would avoid that area at all costs. Oh my God, that was such a good one. I love when shit disappears. That thing was definitely wanting to lure you guys in. And it's a good thing that you and uh, Trevor, was it Trevor? had those feelings, like had the ability to feel those things so that you did not go inside. I don't even, I wonder what would have happened if you went inside. Would you have died? Would you have been like abducted and taken somewhere? Would you have like went into some other dimension? Like what do you, what do you guys think would have happened? This definitely gives me vibes of uh, part 13 with the closet in that house. Good one. This was a good one. This was a good one.